Hi everyone, I'm Mara Webster with SAG After Foundation and thank you so much for tuning in to watch another one of our conversations at home videos today. Before I hand over to today's amazing panel conversation, I want to continue reminding everyone watching these videos that as a nonprofit organization, we're continuing to raise money for our COVID-19 Emergency Assistance Fund. This is working to support actors who are currently out of work with all of the film and television productions being closed at the moment with paying basic bills, buying groceries, paying rent, whatever it is that they need to get by day to day at the moment. So please check out the details below this video and consider supporting if you're able to in any way. Um, and without further ado, it is my absolute pleasure to hand over to today's moderator, Casey Ifeani. Thank you so much. Oh, hello, Cynthia. I'm so excited okay. to talk to you. Oh my God. <laughs> so let's get into it because yeah. you turned in what I consider to be one of the more interesting characters that we've seen on television recently. And of course, I'm talking about your role as Holly Gibney in HBO's The Outsider. And throughout the show, she's often described as quote unquote unique, and she certainly <laughs> is. So yes, yes, I mean, really, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wanna start like, who, who is Holly Gibney to you? Cause I think it's one thing to read a character on paper, but then you're tasked with bringing that character to life. So who is Holly yeah. Gibney to you? I think that Holly is, She's the woman that you don't get to see very often. She's the woman that uh, is an outsider, feels like an outsider, and is genuinely trying to make connections uh, wherever she goes, but finds it difficult to do that. Um, I think you don't get to see those women very often who, who are sl slightly socially awkward, on the spectrum, genuinely trying to make it through every day, uh, understanding things that don't come naturally to them, but still have this brilliant mind uh, and are, and do incredible work and, and things for people, but they just have like a, there's like a bridge that they have to cross before they can connect. Uh, mm. And you don't get to meet those people very often, but she's very dear to me. Yeah. yeah, and so how did you find your way into this character? Because, you know, she because she is so unique, and I know that in the, the source material, she was written as a white woman. So mm -hmm. not that not that race really has anything to do with this particular character, but mm -hmm. I just think you're, you're coming in into a very interesting space in yeah. bringing this character to life. So how did you find your way into Holly? A number of ways, really. I think um, I, I was lucky when it comes to cr like creating the way she looked. I, I sat and I spoke with my hairstylist, Corey uh, Morena and Terrell, um, who, and he does my makeup, who sort of sat with me to sort of create what, what the language of her was, what she looked like. So it was the long braids that were slightly close to the skin tone and it was the very sort of um, uh, muted makeup, but still very pretty, but all again, very close to the skin tone so that it felt um, felt different, just enough off to the left that you were still like, hmm, who is this person? I sat with my, make, my um, uh, costume designer and I, we wanted to find a uniform for her that didn't, uh, that really only spoke to who she was as a person, who she, uh, the work that she was doing and, and didn't dive too much into her sexuality, who, her as a woman. So it's just that this button up, you'll notice that she's always wearing a button up and it's always mm -hmm. a button up and she knows a button up and she knows, because it's like a, a, a defense. It's like protection for her. It's like her shield. And um, we all sat to figure out what that could feel like. But more than anything, I had, I was lucky enough to have really great writing and Richard writes a uh, specific for the character. Not, it wasn't the color of her. It was just who she was, this brilliant woman who has a, an incredible mind. And there was so much in the material that was written for, for me, this character that I sort of like had, it was like a playground really. You know, finding all the details that you can, uh, you can use to create how she moves, how she thinks, the way she responds, the way she breathes, the way she uh, processes things, the way she looks at people when she's thinking about something. Um, and I just was taking from the writing to figure that out. And the way she, the long speeches that she would make and where the commas would be, where the full stops would be, why? And because they're not necessarily in the, the most conventional places. Right. Um, and so you're sort of, finding what that rhythm is like. And her rhythm is totally different to anyone I've ever met, really. It's kind of awesome, yeah. And that's, I'm so glad that you mentioned the, like the clothing and the hair, because these are things that I definitely picked up on. And I know 
just seeing you outside in the world, because you yourself are such, you express yourself through your fashion before this conversation started, I was complimenting you on your look right now. And I think it's, it's, it's obviously, you know, we're not dealing with like a period piece. This isn't Harriet where the clothes like really have to be specific. Yeah. Like this really could have been, she could have been dressed in, in many different ways. And so I, I love yeah. that you mentioned collaborating on figuring out those specifics of her hair, of her makeup, of her clothes. And so for you, I mean, how important is that to have, to, to, to really have the, the, the outside match how you want this character to be, like to really shine from the inside out? Like how important is that for you as an actor to have the right look for that character? Yeah. For me, it's really important because I feel like it's another form of language. You know, when before someone speaks, you look at them and you have an idea of what they might be or who they might like turn out to be, what they might say, how they might speak. And so for me, I wanted to make sure that when you looked at her before she opened her mouth, you knew that there was something different about her. You knew that, there, that you might, you were drawn into her. Right. I think that on the first look, when you see her, it's sort of an odd thing to see this. It, it's like pretty here is pretty mm -hmm. these long braids are really pretty and everything else is sort of like androgynous yeah. why are those two things together like why is it what, what is that language that we're looking at and, and how did she get to that you know um I, I, for me it was really important because i felt like I, the language starts before she speaks mm -hmm. and i wanted to i wanted to sort of lean into to what that could be yeah and you know speaking of the way that she speaks i mean you mentioned like her speech pattern is a little bit yeah. you know left of center and i think that I find I find this character so interesting, especially how you how you played her because she really could have gone off the rails. I mean, she she has this almost robotic and slightly detached way of speaking and moving about the world, and it really could have gone very broad and almost silly in a way in the wrong hands. Yeah. And so, yeah. what what parameters or guardrails did you set up for yourself to make sure that wasn't an issue? Connection for me, I think I. If I, to remind myself that consistently she's not trying to be an outsider she's not trying to be different she she just is what more than anything she's trying to be connected she's trying to communicate she's trying to make a connection with people and so the, the thing that we do when we're trying to do is we try to um we, we always mim mimic each other it's like when you're trying to be kind to someone you're in conversation and when you're sitting next to someone you'll find that when we start mirroring each other mm -hmm. it's sort of that and and though that might not be her exact language it's like she's learning to do that she's figuring out what that might look like for her so she's never trying to be too far off the rails because really and truly she's trying to be as close to the center as she possibly can it's just that her center looks slightly different to everyone else so right. i think that when you're when you're when the knowledge is that she is a human being and she's trying to connect there's no reason to go so far away from who we are as human beings it's just mm -hmm. that it takes her a, a bit longer to get to where everybody else is so it looks different when she connects yeah, yeah. And you, of course, share quite a few one-on-one -on -one scenes with other incredibly gifted actors, mainly Ben Mendelsohn and uh, Mark Menchaca. And for you, what do you need from another actor to make a scene work? Because as I mentioned, I think that it's so fascinating. Like, I'm, for my mind immediately goes to the really tense scene where you're in the car with uh, with with Mark's character. And yeah. you know, she's realizing, she's like putting the pieces together. She sees those bumps on the back of his neck and she's just yeah. like, <laughs> it's, a, it's such a little acting of just like that fear and everything. So, I mean, like, what do you need from another actor to make a scene like that work, to make, to really pull out what that scene needs? I think more than anything, I, I trust, I want them to trust me that I'm listening and I'm paying attention to what they're giving me. Um, I, I rarely think about myself in those, those situations because I think if I'm really paying attention to who's in front of me and what they need and what they're saying, I can give them what they, what they need. Um, and so, and in giving them what they need, they end up giving me what I need as well. Um, and I'm lucky to have, you know, Ben and Mark, they're brilliant, brilliant people. And they listen so acutely that it's sort of a real cool tennis match that you end up playing. So every time you try something slightly different, if he tries something slightly different, I can try something slightly different try something slightly different and it goes back and forth and then if we try another scene we try it again and it's we add something to it. we know that we're listening to each other and there's this wonderful joy in being able to find these small differences in in the way we play things it's kind of awesome yeah yeah and me, and, that, me and ben had fun that's for sure yeah i can tell <laughs> and you know <laughs> having this conversation this back and forth you know i was going to ask i mean was there 
a particular scene that had a major learning curve for you? Like, I don't know if dialogue or getting the blocking right, like what scene gave you the most trouble? Oh, the most trouble. Um, I wouldn't say it was the most trouble, but it was probably the most challenging. And that's the moment where she's um, explaining to everyone what she's thinking has happened, that she ha- she believes that it is El Cuco, that she believes that- Bless um, her heart. And, I was- <laughs> you know, something just so endearing about how afraid she is that people will not believe her. Right. And that speech itself was uh, six to eight pages. And I, like, <laughs> <laughs> and it was it's like a true monologue in a play. And so it, I, I guess in the learning of it, that was like, it was like learning um, a puzzle and trying to put it together and the numbers and the dates and the names and the characters and the times. So you're trying to figure out how to like, you finding a way to f- figure out how to, to let those things, that information come out without losing the, all of the information that she has as a person. The fact that she is slightly different, the way she, that, that she does breathe th- differently, that all of these people are watching her, that she's not really used to having an audience, that all of a sudden she has to like explain things to people that she knows is true, but knows will not be believed. It, it's these things, these human things that have to come on top of all of these facts. So. I mean, the difficulty was mainly in learning it, but it was, I think that there was a thrill in being able to sort of figure out what that would look like and figure out how that would feel. Um, yeah, it was kind of cool. Uh, I felt so bad for her. I was rooting for her. I was just uh, like, I believe you. And so, I mean, that's, I, I love roles like this for, for actors because I just, I know that it must it must add so much to your skill set. It must it must really stretch you in ways that you push you out of your comfort zone, really. And so, yeah. what would you like? How would you say this role as Holly in The Outsider broadened your skill set as an actor? I what I really enjoyed about doing this is that it most of the roles I've played are very physically um, connected. So it's all all about the outward movement. Um, Holly is the opposite, the total opposite. So her movement is like on the inside. I said before that uh, she has kinetic energy, but the mm. kinetic energy is internal. Um, and that is a new thing. Um, it was nice to be able to sort of stretch that skill to, yes. to communicate without having to use my body the way I'm used to using it um, to find the smallest way of making someone understand something so that it doesn't necessarily need to be hands and arms and everything and that it really is a tilt of the head and it really is a, a lean forward and a look and a frown or a breath you know those things the little details finding how finding out how small you can make a detail that that people understand something is odd and up or realizing that you know taking off a ring and putting it back on means oh she's nervous oh dear Mm -hmm. you know that kind of thing it it, it really is i I was able to expand um really like detailed work and it's my favorite thing when you can really like dig into something and find all the small pieces that was that's what i think um expanded for me yeah Uh that and so i mean what do you think the roles that you've done so far because we've only just talked about the outside i mean you've obviously like i actually interviewed you for harriet like when that was doing its press run and so you yeah. you've had this really interesting run in your tv and film career so far and so what would you say the roles that you've chosen say about you as an actor like what what career are you building for yourself would you say um i think it says i'm a glutton for punishment <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> oh, I mean, listen again. I saw Harry. And I saw you, and I know how, like you said, like connecting to the character on a physical level. They're like easy, right? <laughs> oh, I clearly don't like the easy things. I clearly like the things that are, that are challenging for sure. Um, that I, you know, and I enjoy telling the stories of women that you don't get to see very often. I think, and and I hope that I hope it, it that it tells people that I'm up for a challenge. That I really am up for, you know. It, ease is not my my interest. I'm not interested in something that's easy. I'm not interested in something that I've done over and over again. I'm interested in telling stories about women that I don't get to see very often. I'm interested in telling stories of women that might be difficult for me to do, that I have to step out of myself to play. Um, that Because that's where I enjoy it the most. That's what 
uh, thrills me the most about telling stories. You know, I became an actor to be able to tell stories of stories that I, that I might not know myself. And so I have to learn every time I do a new role. I, you know, if I'm not learning on, on set, then I probably haven't made the right decision. But most at this point in time I've been lucky enough to consistently learn something new with every character um, and play something new and be something new and experience different human beings so I think that's what hopefully people see someone who's the challenge of playing things that aren't easy yeah and so for you I mean of course you've 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 done so much and 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 what's really relatively a short career. I mean, you have so much, you have so much farther to go, but where do you see, where do you want to grow yourself as an actor? Like, what do you feel you need to develop more in? Like, how do you, how, how do you want to push yourself next? I should ask. I think I, I have yet to play someone who is, and I hate the word villain. Let's say the, the anti-hero. There you go. Um, Yeah. (laughs) I'd say an anti-hero. I've yet to be able to, I haven't been given the opportunity to play an anti-hero. And I think that would stretch me because, you know, we make so many preconceived notions. We have preconceived notions of who these people are. And we have so many judgments about who the anti-villain might be that we assume from the offset that they're just bad people. And I think that I would love to be able to play someone that challenges that um, notion that, you know, They aren't the best of people, but there's a reason for it. And that you can see the humanity in this person. Um, I'd love to be able to do that. I haven't done it yet. Um, I don't know. And I, I, I really would love to play something that is obviously physical, like that pushes me physically to my brink. And Harriet did that in a very different way, but it's very, I think it's very different to something like a, 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 a true action movie that is about the action. I haven't done that yet. Um, so I'd love to see how far I can go with my, my physical ability and what I'd have to train for. Something I'd have to actually train for that's different <laughs> from what I already have, yeah. You have, you, with the character of Holly, I mean, you have the, the source material from Stephen King, which is amazing, yeah. but, you know, you're, you're, uh, there's a lot of inventing this character if, mm-hmm. with what you have to bring to it. So would you say, like, what, what's, what's that sort of, what's that difference for you in, in playing these historical characters and these these yeah. you know, these real life people versus a fictional character i guess w- when it comes to historical characters there's there's a choice to make there's you either lean so far into who the person was that you sort of begin to mimic that person mm-hmm. or you try and take as much of the essence of the person as you possibly can so that you can do it as truthfully as you possibly can and i think that that is a challenge because you have to sort of overcome the fear of what if people don't believe that i'm playing this person and what if they now start making comparisons when clearly i am not aretha franklin i am giving you a version of her uh, and trying to be as close to her as I possibly can. But I'm, I'm trying to tell you her story, Uh, but Aretha Franklin already exists and she existed and there's enough of her to, to see her. Uh, I think my job is to make sure that her story comes across as fully and as truthfully as possible. And that can be difficult because you want to make sure that you have all of the ingredients you need to do that. Um, so you take, you do as much research as you possibly can. You listen to as much as you can. Uh, and you sort of just have to throw caution to the wind and go for it and, and hope for the best. Sometimes. Yeah. And for you, I mean, do, do you see yourself, because you're, you've obviously made such an amazing, you're making such an amazing career for you in TV and film, but you know, we can't forget your theater work. I mean, you are just like, you can do it all. And I know that there is a difference. I mean, some people may think, oh, it's all just acting. But no, I think it's, I think it's a different muscle that you have to work when you're yeah. in front of like a live audience. And so do you see yourself going, like what's, do you see yourself going back to theater? Like what is, what's, what are your theater plans? Cause we miss you on yeah. stage. <laughs> I, I, I do, I want to go back to theater. I do, I, it's about really just finding the thing that, that, you know, entices me. I was spoiled with The Color Purple. I really was. It was a beautiful story that had, a, you know, it was like so full and and rambunctious that I was like age, like able to really get my teeth into it. And I just don't want to do, I don't want to do anything that's only less than that, which obviously, you know, presents a challenge because you've got to find something that is as full um, and as satisfying as that is. So when I do and I'm looking, um, I'll be back. Yeah. Very nice. Ah, oh, this has been absolutely amazing. I really appreciate <laughs> this. No, this is, I, ah, uh, 
I just love talking to you. Like, <laughs> I feel like I, yeah, we're going to cross that <laughs> again. Because like I said, it was great interviewing you for Harriet. And now I'm so glad I got a chance to talk to you for this. But yes, you were just absolutely fantastic. And always such a pleasure to talk to. Thank you very much. Let's do it again, I say. Let's just keep I doing mean, it. I mean, look, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. We'll switch Zoom, Zoom information and we can do this. Yeah, again. yeah. No, and we can. Molly, if you're there, we should do this. <laughs> just make sure that we're always in touch. And if you want to chat, I'm here to chat. Why I not? love it. Ah, cheers to you. Thank you. Yeah.